All right, then, if you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. Ephesians chapter 2, Paul writing to the church of Ephesus, says, And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. I'd like to preach, the Lord be my helper, on tonight on the thought, He may be a prince, but He's not king. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank You for Your goodness and watch here, Lord. We thank You for the ones that You brought together tonight, Lord. We know that it's not by any kind of accident, but rather, Lord, by divine appointment. We pray for the ones tonight that... Uh, have come and went, Lord, that we, you would be with them. Lord, uh, for Barbara and her daughter, Lord, that it would be your will that they might come and hear truth preached, Lord, and be back in your house. Lord, we pray for Haley tonight, Lord, that you would be with her, that you would stir her up to her condition, that she might be saved. Lord, we thank of Shonda and Eddie, Lord, that you would restore them to the faith, Lord, and if they need salvation, that you might save them tonight. So many uh, that's come and gone, Lord, and we pray that you'd be with them, that you'd stir them up tonight, draw them unto yourself. Lord, we pray that you'd awaken your word tonight uh, to the listeners, Lord, that you would put me out of the way and put you before them, Lord, according to your mercy and grace, we pray it. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, very familiar verses of Scripture and a uh, great deal to be said about grace in chapter 2 of Ephesians, a great deal to be said about an election and predestination in chapter 1. And sometimes I think we get so caught up in that that we miss a very important part that Paul includes in verse 2. Uh, first of all, in the first verse, Paul writes, And you have he quickened or made alive. He made you alive and not the other way around. Uh, to be quickened or to be made alive, you have to be dead uh, in the first place. And the Bible teaches us we are dead in our trespasses and sins. So that is the quickening that has to happen. And uh, you know what? We don't see that preached like we need to see it preached. We don't need to complicate salvation. But we, do under we need to understand and know that He brings life. He is the one that brings life to us and not the other way around. You can no more bring life to you than you can uh, create a baby on your own and give life to it. It's an impossibility. And so we see then that Paul reminds the church at Ephesus of this. And more than that, in verse 2, he reminds them of their prior condition. Where in times past, before you were saved, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world. Now the course or the path of this world will lead you to destruction. Amen. The course or the path of this world will lead you to hell. The course or this path of this world will, will lead you to an early grave. Uh, the course or the path of this world has never been a good one. Now with that said, let me say this. Many of the redeemed still walk the same path. You say, well, that's an impossibility. No, you can be saved and rebel against God, but I will say this, you'll cut your life short in the process. Maybe. Uh, he'll take you out. And so we see then that uh, as Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus, he makes some reminders of where they had been. Uh, then notice what he says, and still talking about how they used to walk according to the prince of the power of of the air. Now I believe this is Satan. I believe this is the devil. I believe this is Lucifer. However you want to refer to, the, to refer to him, I want you to see that he is recognized as a prince. He is recognized as a prince 
and power of the air. You know, that's one reason we about left this behind. We're pilgrims and strangers. You know, what would you want to with an earth that, that is overrun by sin and that Satan is the ruler of? Why would we want to stay here? But we get built in, don't we? We get dug in with money and, and homes and houses and lands and we get all, all tore up about it when really we have no business here to start with. Uh, it's not our final home. And we ought to be able to give the praise of the Lord to that. Amen. But I do want you to see, and a lot of times uh, we, we don't like as bad just to see this, the devil does have specific powers. He has the powers that was granted every angel that ever was. Uh, he was in the same league with Michael the archangel. Uh, very strong and powerful. Lucifer was an angel among angels. And we don't ever need to fail to realize that. Because listen, if you fail to recognize who he is and what his tools are, he'll overtake you and have you in a bag before you know it. And so we, we need to be educated about who, who it was. And we do need, and as scary as it might sound to you, we do need to recognize and know, you know what? If a church is doing its job, and I dare say most of them are not, and probably we're not doing what we need to do either, but a church that's meeting with God, and I'm not saying you have to have 170 members, a church that's meeting with God and the Holy Ghost is meeting with them and making the Word a living Word, you can depend on the devil or his imps, one of them showing up, because he hates that. That's right. he, he, he don't necessarily hate that there's uh, 115 in one place. You know what? You can have 115 and God not meet with you because of the coldness and the indifference. But anyway, if we're going to meet together and have God meet with us, you can anticipate problems because that's what Satan loves to do. Now, as we look at his abilities, I will say this, he only goes as far as God will let him. And you know why? Because he's king. He's king. Is the devil a prince? You bet you he is. Is God still king? You bet you he is. And the king always trumps the prince. And we, 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 need, we need to remember that. And certainly we do need to see what he's capable of. But remember, we serve one that's much, much greater. Uh, verse 3, I just want to notice a couple of things in there. Among whom, all, among whom also we all had our conversation, our behavior in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature... The children of wrath. You tell me that man has a kind nature? You, you, you want to tell me that, that we're bent toward doing good? You, you want to tell me that we can make the right decision to follow God even if there was a decision to make? No, no, no. That lines us out perfectly. We're wicked from the inside out. Amen. And if God doesn't intervene, there's no hope. There, there's no hope. And you know what? That will make us cherish our salvation. It will make our salvation rich and full to us. And it will cause us to weep at the feet of Jesus because He did not have to save you. Amen. And, and that will thrill our souls and it will make us happy. But we look over it many times. Go with me to the, back to the book of Zechariah in the Old Testament. I want to notice a couple of things there about Satan. Zechariah, that's right after Haggai, if you can find that. Uh, Zechariah chapter 3 in the very first verse. Zechariah chapter 3 in the very first verse. The Bible says, And he me and he shewed me Joshua. Now this is the Joshua of the Old Testament. This is the Joshua who was Israel's military leader after the death of Moses. He was the one that would... Uh, lead them on into the promised land and he shoot me Joshua. Now let me say this, there's not one of us among the sound of my voice that has one thing that would compare with the abilities of Joshua. He took up the, he, he took up the torch and when Moses had left it behind. Moses' works was done, Joshua's was to begin and he picked it up and went with it. So, if Joshua had this issue, you can too. That's right. 
If, if Joshua had this experience, and he did, you can too. Now, uh, it says, And he shewed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Now, I want you to, I want you to let that kind of sink in, because I want you to see... Uh, we, we studied this at the church recently, and, and uh, I preached on it. Who is to be at our right hand? God. Remember we talked about following? He either needs to be in front of you, or He needs to be at your right hand. He needs to be leading you in the right direction. And so here we find Satan taking the place with God's man as leader. And you know what that says to me? You can be led by Him too. We think because we're redeemed, hey, I'm off the hook. No, no. The redeemed can be led in the wrong way. Israel was to be a nation that they have never assumed all the land that was theirs. All of the Middle East would be, virtually all the Middle East would be theirs if they had followed God's plan. You know why they didn't? In, in addition to fear, Joshua wasn't always being led in the right way. If there was defeats all along the way, was there not? He took that bunch in to be their slaves. Yeah. That, that was sinful. Yeah. And so, how did that happen? Well, the devil was right there, interfering, discouraging, as he always does. So, so don't, don't think that you are exempt from this. You can look at your right hand and when you're ready to make a decision and think, is, is God in this or is the devil in this? And the, and the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is this not a brand plucked out of the fire? Now, I will say this, look very carefully. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Don't try to rebuke Satan. You're no match for him. Right. Amen. You're no match for him. No. Uh, he's much stronger, much wiser. I mean, I know we think, you know, we've arrived in Baptist church. He's much smarter than you. He's been around, around since eternity. He knows his stuff. Yeah. And he will, and he will come out against you. And so we see then the best thing we can do when we we sense that uh, the wrong person, the wrong entity, the wrong leader is at our right hand is just give it to God. Let Him rebuke him. We've never been able to do that, and and, and we've never been able to be any match for him. That's why Adam and Eve fell in the garden. They were no match for him either. And so we must understand and know that we too cannot be uh, uh, just give it to God. But I do want you to see He will always be there trying to pull you aside. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 4. Very familiar verse of Scripture. Uh, the Lord Jesus in His 30 days of fasting. Huh? Uh, excuse me. 40 days of fasting. And you know... Um, you know what that was? That was 40 days of fasting. A lot of people say, well, I believe he was just on a Jew's fast, and, and he that was a Jewish custom. You know what? The Bible says he, was, he had fasted for 40 days. And you know what I believe? He fasted for 40 days. I believe that it was literally no food, no water, nothing for 40 days. And listen, I'm a nurse. I understand that. Most people would die on the seventh day without water. And you know why he didn't? Because he's God. I, I've seen people where the family, and whether you support this or not, I, I think that I would want to go that route, my family would, that, that the, the disease so ravaged the body that they say, hey, we're done, mother wouldn't want to live this way, and they just take everything off, and it usually takes about seven to eight days and they'll die. And you know what? He didn't because he was God in the flesh. That I believe it says what it, exactly what it means. And so after this event, after this was all over and done with, in that moment, we see Satan rise up and do his thing as he always does. Um, and 
Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Now, let me say this. He knew Jesus. He knew what he was all about. And he knew what he was capable of. Now, if he came to me and said, Larry, command these stones to be made bread. He would never do that to me. You know why? Because I can't do it. But he would do something that I could do. Larry, go get a few dollars out of the bank. You have, you have a little bit in there and get you something to drink and eat. And the reason he did that, he knows I have the ability to do that. Take a five dollar out of bill out of your pocket and go get you a Coke. He would use that because he knows what my availability is and he knows your availability too. He knows what you tend to do. He knows what you're bent toward and he will always use that against you. He's not going to ask you to do anything that's above your ability. Because he knows you. Yeah. And, and so we see then that uh, the reason that he tempted the Lord Jesus in this way is because he knew that the Lord Jesus could follow through. If he wanted to, certainly he could have. Verse 4, but, but he, meaning Christ, answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread, bread alone, but out of every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and seeth him and set of him on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall not give thee, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thy dash thy foot against a stone. And you know what? Had the Lord Jesus decided to take the plunge, <coughs> that's exactly what had happened. The angel would come by and call him. And ease him on down to the ground. And you know why? Because his time wasn't finished yet. That's right. he, 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 would, he would give himself a sacrifice in the week of the Passover. That's how it had to be done to be the atonement. It wasn't time for it to happen yet. So yes, but even though that was an ability, and certainly the Lord Jesus knew that what would happen, he tempted him, the devil tempted with something he knew. And what amazes me, he'll even use Scripture to tempt you with. What about this? What about that? You know, a lot of uh, kind of like people run in, Ooh, what about, what about Acts chapter 2? And sometimes you're like, yeah, what about Acts chapter 2? Huh. You know what we need to do? <laughs> Be careful. The... the, the the devil is going to use his available means. So if you're rich, he's going to use money. If, you're, uh, if you think you know the Scripture, he's going to use the Scripture against you. If you think that you've arrived somewhere, he's going to use whatever his means is available. So knowing that this was the sinless Son of God, he used exactly what was available to him. The Gospel of Luke. We see again something that Satan will use. Now again, I want you to see he's attacking the Son of God. And so if we are sons, and the Bible says that we are, then uh, he'll attack you too. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 8. Luke chap chapter 10 and verse 8. Uh, excuse me, verse 18. The Bible says, And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now I went through that in there to tell you this. I want you to know where the abode of Satan is. He is not in hell. He will be someday. But he is not there yet. His imps, the third of the angels, they are not in hell yet either. They're, they're out doing his bidding. All he has to say is, listen, I want you to go over there and I want you to get the job done. And they immediately go at his command. And, he does. And, and, and we don't even know how innumerable they must be. We know the maniac of Gadara had, had 2,000 in him. We, we do know that. Well, in fact, we don't know that. We equate that to the number of swine that were killed. But Mary Magdalene had seven herself. 
right? And, and so we don't we don't really know the amount, but we know there's a huge number of demons or devils or fallen angels at his disposal, and he is here among us on a daily basis. And if you listen, if you're not troubled by the devil, if he don't come your way and cause you problems, my best advice to you as a man of God is make your calling and election sure. Amen. Because if he don't fool with you, listen, you must already be his. That's right. And, and so we see then that we as the Lord's people need to understand the position and the location of Satan so that we can that we can come against him. The Gospel of Luke chapter 13, uh, verse 16, just a little further over. Luke 13 and verse 16, the Bible says the Lord Jesus had healed a woman. She had had some kind of infirmity that kept her from walking. And we find out at verse 16, the Lord speaking and said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Now, a lot of people will say, well, you know, this is a type of salvation. No, no. Read, read verse 15 this week. Her problem was an infirmity of the flesh, and she simply couldn't walk. And who was given, who was that attributed to? Satan. That's pretty scary to me. But he is a prince. Remember that he is a prince. So uh, you know, I've heard uh, I've heard people preach it both ways. Well, if she has cancer, that's the will of God. I understand what they're saying in that, but it may just be an attack of Satan permitted by God. That's what happened with Job, was it not? So in this woman's life, she'd been bed bound 18 years and she'd had this malady about her and the author of it was Satan. And I'll give you one more reason. I think she was a saved woman. She was attributed to be an Israelite. And said, even though she's a Jew, she still has this problem. And so I think that should make us wake up and smell the coffee that Satan could be the one bothering us with infirmities of the flesh that is under his dominion. And when you think about that and you get wary about it and you have a dreaded diagnosis, remember, yes, Satan is prince, but Jesus is king. Amen. He's the prince, but Jesus is king. You'll never forget that. Go with me to Revelation chapter 19. Very familiar verses of Scripture. We've saw so many ways that Satan can attack us. How he can come against us. Now I will say this. If you'll find the attack, every attack is carnal. He even talks about attacking our minds. Things that we, you know, there, there's some things I mean, the devil bring it. I, I wish I could forget them. But he'll bring it to me again and again. That's an attack of the mind. He'll attack your mind. He'll attack your body. And he'll even he'll drag you down in the spirit. Yeah. Does that make you all? Certainly not. But I'll say this. If you're so discouraged you, can't know, you don't know daylight from dark, how can you be of a use for God? He likes to cripple out His people. He uses their mind, their body, and discouragement to, to make them as least that they can be. And that's, that's what He enjoys doing. Let me say this for the redeemed. He can't impact your soul. He can impact your happiness. And He can take your joy from you. And He does. He dearly loves to do that. He can't take your soul, but He can destroy your life. Uh, I, I've seen that time and time again. So, we know He's a prince. We know that He's under the dominion of, of the Lord. But, <laughs> one day, that will be ripped forth from Him. Go with me to Revelation uh, chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. Revelation 19 and verse 11, the Bible says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. 
You know, what, what a wonderful, glorious day, one day, when we see the heavens open. You know what? Uh, uh, a lot of people say it'll come from the east, and where they where, where they get that, and it might be, but the only thing, it depends on where you're at on the earth, where the east is at. And uh, you can think about that this week. Uh, but it says as the sun, it, it talks about he, he will come, but from the sun, you know, in the direction of the sun. That's where east comes from. But, you know, sometimes I'm in that old pickup driving to work. I, I hate my driving to work. I love my job. I hate to drive to work. But, um, uh, and so I'm driving and I look out to the east and sometimes I think, you know, just be coming up that 4.30 hospital routine really uh, cramps my stuff. But I, I see the sun is peeking up over Clark's Hill. I think it could be the day. Uh, th th this might be the time. And look back at those beautiful clouds as the sun's coming up. They, they, they turn crimson and gold. And you say, say, this might be it. And so we, uh, we see that uh, uh, from, the, from the Word of God that He gives us that encouragement that one day this will literally happen and we can give Him the praise and the glory for it. Verse 11, And I saw, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse meaning purity and power, and he that sat on him was called faithful and true. In righteousness he doeth judge and make war. You know, I, I love that. His name is faithful. We, we sometimes get discouraged and we think there's no reason to continue. You know what? The God, the God I serve, His name's faithful. And he, you know what? He's never left me yet. He never will be. I'm not going to preach you a health and wealth message because this Bible just don't back it up. This Bible says it. You know what? And said those that endured to the end. We Baptists don't like that, but this is what I believe. When push comes to shove, if you give in and say, "Okay, uh, I'm going to do this," and I, you know, I'll go into the world. I'll go into the world just to protect my family. I don't think you have it. And, and, and that's not real popular preaching. Am I going to be able to withstand it? Not in the flesh, but I believe He'll give me strength in that day. Amen. Uh, he's promised us that. And so we, we see then that the, uh, the Lord is faithful to those that believe. And I don't think that means a full belly all the time. Uh, we may starve to death, but I do believe He'll give us faithfulness to stand in the day of starving. Verse 12, His eyes were as a flame of fire. You know, I love that verse, and it humbles me all at the same time because a flame of fire can look right within you. He can see what you're about. He can see us when we have a good attitude. He can see us when we have a sorry attitude. He can see us how we treat our neighbors, what we do before them. He can see everything we do right down to the very motivation that we do it for. That's a very, very light vision. You know what? If we come to church just to show up, He knows it. Maybe, that's right. yeah. Maybe nobody else know it, but He knows it. If you, uh, if you, uh, if you treat your uh, wife in a bad way, He knows it. He, he, he knows it all. The secret and the private, He knows every bit of it. And His eyes were as a flame of fire. On His head were many crowns. And He had a name that is written, and no man knew it, but He Himself. Now I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, he had many crowns. Well, where did he get them? Let's give you something to think about. Well, we find the, the four and twenty elders crest and crowns the fruit. We find crowns in the New Testament such as the crown of life. And the Bible says concerning the crown, the crown of life is given to all that are found faithful. Now that that is the problem is those that are found faithful. And, and, and uh, I, I fully believe there'll be crowns for us because in Matthew's Gospel it says there'd be some saved so as by fire. Meaning that, and that their wood, hay, and stubble would be consumed. And so that says me, some will have something to lay at the feet of Jesus, some will not. But these innumerable crowns, said that he had many crowns, they come from us. 
If you will bow down before Him and say, Lord, it's all been about you. You know what? When I, when I look at my little minuscule life and, and what little accomplishments I have had and a lot of the accomplishments I have such as nursing or, or uh, you know, my family, a lot of times I get so caught up in them that they'll be consumed as wood, hay, and stubble. You look at your house when you get home, you pull up in front of it and listen, you know one day it'll be consumed. Just remember that. You look at the vehicle you drive at home and you just know this, one day it will be consumed. Amen. Right. So what does it matter anyway? That's right. Amen. What does it matter anyway? And so we see then that uh, we, we, find, we find the Lord Jesus with many crowns and He's coming down and it says here, and He was clothed and He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and His name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed Him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of His mouth goeth a sharp sword and with it that He should smite the nations and He shall rule them with a rod of iron and He treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And on His vesture... And on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Right. See, in that day, Satan or Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, his, his prince, his princehood is over. Amen. He's subject to the king. And whether we want to accept it or not, we're subject to the king too. We, re we really are. And you know, that, that, that's really that's really the problem today is we don't want to be subject. Right. Amen. You, you know why people don't follow the will of God? They don't want to be subject to God. Yep. You, know, you know why we can act so angrily and miserable to people really we barely know? It's because we don't want to be subject to God. What does the Bible say? Live peaceably with all men. You know what? If they're not threatening the faith, why are you causing them a problem? What kind of testimony is that? How are you going to display the person of Christ when you're the troublemaker? It's an impossibility. It, it, it can't be done. So then we, as the Lord's people, we ought to be the shining example. We ought to be the one to be able to give a, a, a good testimony in the day that we live. We serve the King. Now, with that said, I do want you to see this. He says, I am King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now what that says to me, there are other kings and there are other lords. You know what Obama is besides being a reprobate? He is a king. And the least you could say about him is that he's a lord. But isn't it going to be a blessed, wonderful day when he says, you're right, Lord. He will bow before him and say, hey, I'll try. What, what a wonderful, glorious day when all these pagan people, all, the, all these God-haters, and even Hillary Clinton has to buy, bow before the master for God of heaven and say, yes, you're right, and I was wrong. Amen. Yeah. Well, what, what a glorious time that's going to be. All these people with a loud mouth, I know this and I know that, and shook their faces in God throughout all their life, huh, they'll bow before God. You know who's going to bow before God one day and say, yeah, you know what? I was wrong. Cain's going to bow before him. Yeah. And Absalom, he'll bow before him. Yeah. Delilah will bow before him and say, yes, you are God. Because he's king of kings and lord of the Lord. So if we're abiding here and we're waiting what we believe will be a soon catching away, although again, as I always say, nobody really knows. And if we're waiting on that time to come, things are probably going to get worse according to the Bible. 
things will wax worse and worse. Uh, it doesn't get gooder and gooder. Things will wax worse and worse. And you know what? If Hillary Rodham winds up in the White House, or if Donald Trump winds up in the White House, it's still going to wax worse and worse. Sure, that's right. Amen. It, it really doesn't matter. You have to vote your conscience if you, if you plan to vote. But I will say this, it will wax and worse and worse because that's what the Bible says would happen. Right. And you know what? There could be Hillary Rodham Clinton to be one of these king of kings and lords of lords. I mean, one of the little kings or one of the little lords. But one day she'll bow before him and say, Yes, Master, you're right. That's right. A king of kings and a lord of lords. Could you imagine the, astonish the astonishment of the people? Uh, Madam Marilyn O'Hare got prayer out of her school. You know, one day she'll humbly bow and say, Yes, Jesus, you were right and I was wrong. All the... Can you imagine Adolf Hitler humbly bowing and saying, I'm sorry what I did for the Jews. You are king. It's going to happen, is it not? All those people, huge rulers of their day, they will humbly bow and say, you are king. Last question I want to read tonight in the little book of Philippians, Paul's letter to the church of Philippi. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, Wherefore, or because God also hath highly exalted him, meaning Jesus, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. You know what? That's a hated truth today. Yeah. I love the great God, the mighty God, Jehovah the Father. There's a name that's above every name. Jesus. Amen. People don't like that. Mm -hmm. they, they, they really don't. People that try to come up with the Jewish name of God. Yahweh. That's fine. But the Bible says Jesus. And, and we ought to claim to that. We ought to rejoice in that. We don't need to be ashamed of the name of, the name of Jesus. Here, here he tells the, the church at Philippi that he is it. He is the one to give glory and honor and praise and give it to him. Verse, uh, verse number 10. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Yeah. Very significant that it, that it includes those people. Now, up to the days of Christ, when Christ led captivity captive, He took those that were looking for, his, looking for Him with Him. But in the center of the earth, there's a place called hell, where even today, the lost are cast. And one day, every one of them, them down there, including the rich man, Say yes, you're king. Amen. That's right. You are king. Mm -hmm. The most vile person you can think of will one day humbly bow and say, Yes, you are king. Amen. And the last one that will do it, Lucifer will bow down and mm -hmm. say, You're king. Amen. And he'll be cast on a lake of fire. See, we need to begin. To honor him as such. Amen. You know, I, I thank God I was born in America. But one problem with being born in America is this we don't even understand what king is. We really don't. Be good for us to do that. My my sister in law is Scott. And you know, she she really Believes and understands is how she was raised. I mean, don't say nothing bad about Queen Elizabeth in front of my sister in law. Uh, she has great confidence. She, she understands royalty, our royal system. She doesn't understand everything that I don't get. And it's because she was reared in it. We need to be subject unto our God. We, we are the one, He's the master. He is king. And if he says you go do it, 
you go do it and run while you're doing it. See, Jonah learned that lesson the hard way, did he not? God told him to do something. He rebelled against it. But it does say when he came up out of that sea, he ran, he ran a three-day journey in one day. You know why? Because God is God. He, he, he is king, and you will do what he has for you. Uh, be prayerful. Be prayerful one another. Uh, we, ought to, we ought to be able to recognize him uh, as king of kings, and when somebody tries to smear his name through the dirt, uh, you, let know that, you let them know that he's your king. That you're, that you're his loyal servant, that you're subject unto his power. And uh, uh, we do great things. All right, we're coming to me tonight before we dismiss. Appreciate that message, by the way. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, again, remember all those that have been mentioned for prayer, and uh, the Lord might, uh, we need to see some divine healing. Amen. Let's, uh, Amen.